Hello. Good morning. Oh, I hope this is working. Okay. Hello. Um, my name is Andrea. Um, I've recorded previously a couple of videos and I always introduce myself as just saying I like to knit a lot. Um, so I thought I would maybe give a little more background to my knitting practice. <clears throat> There's a dog here. Let's hope he doesn't bark. Um, anyway, good morning from Los Angeles again with this cuckoo weather. It's really gray and chilly out. Um, although the sun is kind of trying to poke through today, hence the lighting. I'm also recording in a new spot, trying it out. Um, we'll see how it goes. Anyway, so I um, live in Los Angeles, raised in Los Angeles, and I started knitting when I was 17 years old. And the first thing that I ever knitted was a teddy bear, the cutest little teddy bear. And I gave it to my dad as a gift, and he has carried it with him all these years. And that is just so sweet and so special, and I love that. So that gift went a long way. Um, and it's kind, it was kind of an ambitious project for a brand new knitter to knit. The teddy bear was maybe this big. Um, and then, um, and then my knitting sort of went on hold while I was in college. And then in my twenties, um, I really got deeply connected in with my aunt and my mother who were avid knitters knitting these gorgeous shawls, um, that were designed by Ann Hansen of Knit Spot. So I kind of, <clears throat> you know, joined the club and for years, all that was, that was all I knit. And my knitting practice was so deeply entrenched in my relationship with my aunt and my mom. Um, they bought very exquisite out of my budget yarn that they were incredibly generous with. Um, I've talked about the dyer here before, um, but it's Posh Yarns and they are a small dye studio. I believe it's a husband and wife and they are, oh wait, the dog is readjusting, hello. Um, anyway, they are a small dye studio from Wales and they just create the most incredible colorways and, and they're bases are just really luxurious and wonderful and and stand up to the test of time. So I did record a video previously that I think only made it onto um, Instagram because the format wasn't um, great for YouTube. So I go into a lot of detail there. Anyway, I go into a lot of detail and um, about those shawls, and I even show a few shawls, so if you're interested in those. Um, and Ann Hansen is just an unbelievable designer, and they carry really amazing wools, and <clears throat> if you're interested in sheep, she does, like, she's, she's kind of done a whole backstory on all of her sheep um, that she sources the yarn from, so it's super cool. Anyway, so I've been knitting for a very long time and I also crochet. I learned how to crochet during the pandemic, which was super exciting. And I now knit with a really tight little posse. There's three of us and um, they're very dear friends of mine. And we, it's really awesome. We try to get together at least like twice a month so that we can talk all things knitting all things yarn show each other what's going on get some inspiration support etc so that is also such a hugely valuable piece to my knitting currently um 
I also am a painter and I was doing a lot of painting um, for the last kind of five years prior to the pandemic. So the pandemic really brought me inside. I have a painting studio outside. And I, I really kind of did a deep, deep dive into knitting during the pandemic, as so many people did. It was very soothing. It was a way for me to be part of my household because the kids were all home and trying to be successful in school. So I started making a lot more garments and I really like this was interesting. I started knitting for myself, which um, mostly I have been knitting for others. So which is wonderful, like lots of kids stuff, lots of baby blankets for others, um, for friends and family. Um, and a lot of my a lot of my knitting is out in the world now, so don't really have it to sh to show. But um, so around the pandemic, I just kind of you know took a little turn and started knitting for myself, which feels really good. Sometimes I feel a little <laughs> a little guilty, but then I'm like, no, it's 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 good. It's good. So that's kind of just in a nutshell, my story. Um, I'm a mom and I have three incredible children, all teenagers. And it shows, <laughs> just kidding. They're amazing, I'm so excited, uh, so excited. My um, oldest child is graduating from high school this year and about to embark on a wonderful adventures, uh, many adventures overseas uh, next year for the year. And she's also an artist, so she'll be working on her portfolio. <sighs> I'm very excited for her. So, and uh, yeah, so anyway, I was wearing earlier because this weather has just been insane. I again i'm in all in los angeles and i don't think we've ever had weather like this like everybody's talking about the weather that i know because <clears throat> it's never been like this so again it was super cold this morning and um i was wearing this which i want to show because i don't think i've talked about this sweater here so this is um a garment that i made i think a couple of years ago I think really close to when it came out, so maybe even more than two years ago. This is the Dre Renee Knits Everyday Sweater. And this is a staple. I wear this all the time. As you can see, there's a ton of dog hair in it. I think there's even, oh look, my hair. My hair is everywhere. Anyway, this I knit in the Fiber Co. Cumbria? Yes, Cumbria, fingering. And it's a very, very nice woolly wool. It is a tweed, black tweed or a charcoal tweed. And I had to wait for this yarn because this was really the color I wanted. And I had to wait for it, but it's worth it. I wear this all the time and you can kind of tell the neckline has gotten a little stretched. I'm embarrassed to say that I haven't washed it, <laughs> but this gets worn all the time and I love it so much. And um, yeah, I'm just, this is the thing. These are the things that I really pull for all the time. I'm, I'm reaching for all these like very kind of staple garments. Um, I love the raglans. This is not a raglan. This is a just round yoke, but also this fits so well. She doesn't do a lot of body shaping and it just kind of hangs very nicely. I probably should wash it, but 
we'll see. So I was wearing that and I was wearing this. <clears throat> um, this is also a Dre Rene knit uh, pattern. It's, I believe it's free or fade and it's a beautiful shawl and I was wearing this, whoops, over my sweater. It was that cold. It was like 60 degrees this morning. Um, and this, I just, I, I love this shawl because it really like was a great stash buster project. I can't figure out where I am. Great stash buster. So I, and it's very like rhythmic, meditative knit. It's not difficult. Um, there are so many beautiful examples um, on Ravelry. It's huge. I mean, I usually don't quite wear it like this. I'm wearing it like this right now because right before I started filming, I was having a hot flash. So <laughs> I had to rip off my sweater and I just kept this on because, yeah, I'm wearing a little camisole underneath. Anyway, the yarns that I've used here are seriously some of my favorite yarns. And I only had like the one skein. So this kind of gorgeous pale pistachio, aptly named pistachio cream. It's the silk mohair base from Wandering Flock. And it is incredibly soft. So, so nice against the skin. And um, I mean, there's just, I think this is one of my favorite colors ever, ever favorite. Anyway, so it's got Wandering Flock. I'm also, I also use some, this is Madeline Tosh. This is the Madeline Tosh Silk Mohair Blend. And this is in the colorway Dried Flowers, which I'm not sure if the camera is picking up, but wow. I mean, it really does look like dried flowers or wait, it's not called dried flowers. It's like dried, but not forgotten. So cute. Anyway, so I've also got that going on here and there's a really sweet little Pico edge. That's fun to, to do at the end. And then the rest, okay, this is Olan sock base. I don't remember the name of the color, but oh my God, it's so soft. And then <laughs> everything's the opposite. Oh yeah. Use the Olan, try to kind of fade it into the last colorway, which I think is Madeline Tosh. Um, and I, I do say this all the time. This is my absolute favorite Madeline Tosh base. It's a single ply. I believe it's called Tosh Merino Light. Um, I can't recall the name of this either, but um, I will link to the yarn for everything in the uh, descriptions below. This is, so, so I think the pattern calls for three colors and I just kind of used up stuff, which is why I had four colors. But I think, and at first I thought it was kind of busy, but I don't know, it's very light. It's kind of perfect for Los Angeles. Um, I usually actually wear it as a, <clears throat> really for warmth around my neck. I don't often wear it kind of shawly like this, so. But it's pretty, it's very pretty and I love it. So again, that was the Free Your Fade. This is the Free Your Fade. Um, <clears throat> what else? Oh, I'm going to share where I'm at with my Winter Lights shawl, which I've shared previously in its kind of beginning stages. So this is um, a Stephen West pattern. It's called the Winter Lights shawl. And also, <clears throat> you know, inspired to knit because I could really use a lot of yarns from my stash. So I'll hold it correctly. I think this is the, yeah. So this is the beginning. It starts with like that sweet little I-cord tab, which is pretty cool. And then moves into this, these sun rays, which I thought 
are really beautiful and nice to knit. Um, as I said before, goes into like little spots and then these bubble stitches, which, mm -mm. I mean, very cool to learn the stitch. Very glad I could experience it, but I don't know. Not my thing. Um, and again, this is not blocked. So it's like so chubby and chunky and squish. So possibly when it all relaxes and and the yarn kind of blooms out, I will have a completely different feeling about it. Um, anyway, these are these painted honeycombs that, that he incorporates into um, several of his designs. And then I omitted the second band of bubbles and I'm just now starting the last three wavy lacy uh, stripes so I don't have that much more to go um, kind of excited about that but you know <clears throat> honestly I I set out with the shawl to do something like wearable because I don't often find and I've started another Stephen West shawl and then completely spent way too much time agonizing over colors and I wound up just ditching it because <clears throat> I'm not that person I want like I want low contrast I want kind of neutrals and I guess I thought these were neutrals <laughs> but then when I put them all together it's like, it's too much. Anyway, so, but I'm, I'm still knitting away because I gotta say, it's so fun. You just kind of bounce along and it's fun to be kind of learning different things. I gotta, gotta say I am in love with mosaic knitting. I, um, a couple years ago, I knit a, like a mosaic, blanket um it's very it's very bouncy it's fun so yeah this is all stash yarn this is mostly madeline tosh posh yarn and i always forget this beautiful one i'll have to um i'll tag i'll put it in the sh in the notes but it's, it's actually an unbelievable color. And it's really wooly. This is a nice one. <clears throat> so that's where I'm at with that. Winter Lights shawl. What else? Oh. Okay. I'm in, I'm, so I'm at my dining room table, which is where I do most of my work. Knitting work. Knitting practice. And I've kind of taken over the entire table. Um. I try and clean it up for my kids sometimes so they can do homework, but um, yeah, doesn't always happen. So I showed some of the yarns that I recently received from the latest or most recent, I should say, um, <clears throat> Newtodin batch order. And one of like the absolute, my absolute favorite color is this, um, Copper Strick, Copper Strick, Copper Strick. She says it much more beautifully. Um, anyway, it's this amazing like pistachio. It's got little hints of apricot and rust. It's so stunning. It also has these like kind of punk rock greens that just like burst it's so cool. Anyway, so I I just really wanted to make something. So um, I have a very basic kind of oversized t-shirt pattern and I just had to cast it on. And I'm using it double-stranded. Don't ask me why, just because I want to, because I just want all the lusciousness of this yarn. So again, it's just like basic raglan. Um, it's going to have sleeves that kind of 
come down a little lower. It seems very like masculine cut, but like very cool. Larger sleeves, longer sleeves, but still t-shirt. Like it doesn't come below your, doesn't come below the, what is this called? An elbow. Anyway, um, the raglan looks really pretty. <laughs> it looks so pretty. And this yarn, I don't even know. I don't think my camera can really, really, really do it justice. Um, but holy smokes, it's so gorgeous. I'm so excited. This is knitting up really fast. Like the double stranded is like, yeah, speeder, speed knitting. Not intentionally. It's just happening because I'm so excited. I think that's also like, I just really want to get this on my body and it's still freezing. So I think I can, I think I can do it. Um, that is a pattern. Um, it's called the need for tweed tea. Nicole Thorson of Thorson knits. Um, so yeah, it's really basic, but I like it. God, there's so much on the table. Oh, I have another work in progress that I talked about last time. Um, <laughs> best laid plan. So I really wanted to knit the Miss Serena tee by Caitlin Hunter. Where is it? Miss Serena. Everybody knows this pattern. Like literally, I everybody's knit this, I feel like, except for me. And as I mentioned before, I was really inspired by Tracy's version, um, Grocery Girls Knit. That is the, such a fun podcast. I literally like laugh out loud. They're so funny. So this is it in case anyone's been, you know, in a cave. So it's gorgeous. It's like this very simple color work, really nicely textured t-shirt. So... And in the last episode, my 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 <clears throat> aspirations were to knit it with um, Nutidin and single stranded, and I went for it, and I I got like I got to the part right before the color work, and I just I just it just looked not right for me. Um, one of my goals for this t-shirt idea is that eventually it will get really hot and I will need to wear a lightweight t-shirt. Um, so I frogged that, which frogging single strand Nutidin, I mean that could be like a segment in and of itself that could be a real it's so insane but whatever so worth it because it's so worth it okay moving on so my miss serena i decided to go into my stash a plenty and i picked out these two these are lace weight skeins um like I want to call them vintage, <laughs> vintage posh yarn. This was something I inherited from my aunt. Um, and it is the same color, but as you can see, one is a little bit richer in the rosy tones and one is a little bit kind of paler in this like nutmeg-ish yellow color. Um, and this yarn has such a beautiful name. I mean, that's another amazing thing about Posh is that they, they also, this is their tag, by the way. And again, this is like, I don't even know how old this is. So it could be that they've completely updated their tags and logo and all that. But I want to share the name of the yarn because it's just so perfect. So the base is Constance Lace and it's, um, ultra fine merino wool generously skeined at 875 yards 800 meters 
per 100 grams. And the name is When the Sun Stoops to Meet the Western Sky. Right? I'm there. I'm right there. I'm so there. So this is my main color. This is my main color. And then uh, my contrast color is also posh, in which I lost the label, or the label has been lost, but it is this like crazy green gold burnished, I don't know. It's, it's an amazing color. It is, I don't think it's really showing up as it is on this camera, but it's shiny. It's like crazy cool. Anyway, so those are my two colors and I'll show you what I've got so far. I tried it on the other day, yesterday, and it fits, but I put it back on the needle. So anyway, it's just, just, it's just begun. Um, but it's very pretty and I like how it's turning out. It's, I think it's definitely going to have more drape. There are a lot of like cables here and little kind of lace, kind of lacy. I don't know. It doesn't seem to be showing up so well right now. Um, anyway, it's really pretty. There's like the little lace detail hands look huge um anyway it's gorgeous and I just started the color work I was up really stupidly late last night because I just had to like do three rows of color work but it's soft stretchy I love it so this is my Miss Serena the beginnings so we'll hopefully be working on that more <clears throat> oh and I have another so close to being finished. So close. Oh my God, I actually took these to the opera last night. And I caught one row in during the intermission. Um, <laughs> we went to see Otello at the uh, Dorothy Chandler, which is such a beautiful place to see music. It's so special there. It reminds me of my childhood and my grandmother and my dad okay um moving on these i've shown in previous previous episodes these are my little mashup socks i'm calling them so and when i say mashup i mean that i combined my favorite sock construction which is the drk everyday socks with a beautiful lace pattern um, called Primrose Socks by This Handmade Life. And essentially I just kind of love the DRK everyday construction. Toe up, two at a time is like a sweet spot for me. So I just kind of use that framework and did not do a ribbed foot, just kind of wanted a really soft footbed. Um, and now that the heel turn and gusset, so cute, is done, I'm bringing the pattern all the way around the leg. And so these will be, these aren't gonna be super tall. These are gonna be like maybe a couple more inches and a tiny bit of ribbing possibly for like stability, but <clears throat> they are so beautiful. I'm so excited and blocked. I know they're gonna be so insanely gorgeous. And the yarn again is a posh yarn and it's a super gorgeous uh, sock base. It's got silk and wool and I believe yak. Yeah. It's luxurious, I mean, so luxurious. And I only had one of these skeins and I think it's perfect for these primrose um, socks. And I, I, I'm hoping that 
you can see all these like gorgeous colors silvery blue lavender i mean ridiculous ridiculous so those are soon to be gifted very excited about gifting these socks so those are almost done and then um <clears throat> What else? Oh yeah, I wanna talk about, did I talk about this last time, my moon whistle? So this is like, once I finish the Stephen West shawl, I I really wanna cast on the moon whistle, um, moon whistle shawl by also Drea Renee Knits. I feel like this is like <laughs> the DRK fan club here. Um, Anyway, did I show this? I don't know. So I'm really aspiring. I'm, as, I'm trying. I'm trying so hard to, I think I mentioned this. So there is a wonderful podcast called Knitting a Good Yarn. And there are these two incredible women who talk about all the things wool, spinning, new to din. And they're both just incredible knitters and um, have amazing color sense. And Jackie showed, um, I don't even remember which episode now, but in one of her episodes, she did a shawl that was so subtle. The color shift was so subtle, but so I mean, evident and beautiful and so elegant. So I'm going, I, this is like what I, this is my like inspiration. And, um, you know, I think I might like Stephen West patterns more if I could just really commit and not be afraid of these really subtle shifts. And this isn't so subtle, so, so subtle, so subtle, but, um, these are like gorgeous colors. The new to din. This is sort of a combination of a few different, <clears throat> two different batches. This is um. This is called skint, and it's kind of this insane grayish brown with copper plus apricot you know all these all these batches are related which is really cool this is also from i think that same batch which is um lang tan which is kind of the most perfect peach apricot but also has like these little like shady shadows of the pale pistachio. And then, <laughs> ridiculous. This is piquant. It's, <laughs> it's so pretty, oh my God. It's like salmon belly, salmon belly, stunning. They're all stunning. So I thought these, and in the Dre Renee Knits version, there is a color shifting yarn. There's a spin cycle, but um, you know, it's okay. I'm gonna use those. Um, what else? Oh, last thing. This is actually pretty cool. I thought this was a cool discovery. So my my daughter is graduating from high school, and I want to give her something as she embarks on this really amazing transitional year. So <clears throat> I can't make her a blanket because she's going far away and that's not gonna work. But I decided to make her a camisole. So she, this is like her outfit. She wears a camisole, the biggest pants you've ever seen and she's a tiny person. Anyway, this is like her, this is her go-to outfit. 
So I thought it would be really cool to knit her a little camisole. And I found this amazing pattern. It's new to me, so I don't know this person can knit uh, at Tiff Knit. And it's called the 9 p.m. Tank. And one of the things that I think is so brilliant, which is why I chose it, um, is that this pattern has <clears throat> like a built-in calculator. So, so what this means is you can take all the measurements, you enter it into this uh, chart, and it basically will calculate the number of stitches that you're going for. I think this is really important. And I think, I'm not sure, I, I know there are some designers that do include this type of calculation, um, but I think that this should kind of maybe be just a resource that is, is available to all the, all. And maybe it is, and I just don't know about it. But in this particular pattern, she really does this calculator based on gauge and all this thing. So it's important to make a swatch. Anyway, I'm really excited. I'm not sure the yarn I'm gonna use yet. She will be in some pretty warm climates. And I'll just, let me see if I can show the, the shape. It's just got these really nice, neat straps and a beautiful kind of finished square neckline, which is, um, you know, this is a style that my daughter only will wear, is this square neckline. It's a thing. And um, <clears throat> yeah, I think it's gonna be really cool. And I'm, I would love to make it in like something linen-y, silky. In fact, if anybody knows or can, can recommend a really kind of soft, wearable um, fabric that isn't too super washy. So I guess it could be a wool, linen, silk blend, something, but something that's really light and kind of nice, not too heavy, not too bulky. I'm looking for that. So if y'all wanna send your recommendations in the uh in the comments below i would so appreciate it okay i think that's that's all for today um i really hope this works out this lighting works out it's not too revealing um anyway um it means so much to me to be able to um make time to do this and hopefully connect um, these spaces even though they're on the internet have a really intimate vibe and I know for myself that I so enjoy watching podcasts by knitters I I've learned so much and and I get a lot of inspiration so I hope it's reciprocated. I hope I can give that to um, somebody. Anyway, happy weekend. And hope you all are in the midst of making beautiful things. And I'll catch you next time. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.